Let's bring in now House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries of New York. It's great to have you on the show this morning. Uh, so tell us your thoughts about last night's debate. How did candidate Kamala Harris do? Well, good morning. Great to be with you. Kamala Harris uh, demonstrated in clear and convincing fashion for the American people that she is ready, willing, and able to be a commander-in-chief for all Americans to make life better for everyday Americans and to bring us into the future. Okay. So, Leader Jeffries, let me ask um, you what I asked David Plouffe earlier, how she had a good debate. There's widespread recognition that she did better than Donald Trump, but how does it change the nature of the race? Well, it was a master class uh, in being serious and substantive. It was a master class in style and strength at the same time. And that's incredibly important uh, because for some Americans, not all Americans, uh, this was a significant uh, further introduction to them in the context of this presidential campaign. I think equally significant is that Vice President Harris continued to lay out a forward-looking agenda to build an opportunity economy, to lower costs, to grow the middle class, to stand up for small businesses, and stand up for entrepreneurs, and stand up for first-time home buyers uh, in ways that will meet the needs of the American people. Donald Trump was stumbling, fumbling, and bumbling throughout the entire debate during his best moments and had no forward-looking vision for the American people. Uh, it was all backward-looking, and I think the American people are ready to turn the page. Leader Jeffries, there was a few moments last night where Donald Trump was pressed and noticeably would not give an answer, one, whether he would sign a national abortion ban, uh, secondly, whether he wanted Ukraine to win the war, uh, and third, he refused to suggest to concede that he lost the 2020 election. And that twinned with his rhetoric over the weekend, talking about the need to imprison those who have worked against him, in his mind, cheated. What is your degree of concern that were he to lose this election, he would inspire the kind of violence, maybe even more so, that we saw four years ago? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a legitimate concern. Donald Trump is a pro-Putin, conspiracy-peddling, election-denying extremist who wants to criminalize abortion care and impose a nationwide abortion ban as a result of uh, the work building upon the Supreme Court justices that he put on the Supreme Court to detonate Roe v. Wade and undermine a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions. And so there are serious concerns that the American people have as it relates to our freedom, as it relates to an economy that works for everyday Americans, and, of course, as it relates to democracy and the peaceful transfer of power, because this is who Donald Trump is. He's not a patriotic American. He's all about himself, and we saw that on full display last evening. Kamala Harris is about the American people. Alita Jeffries, uh, we saw earlier this year Donald Trump killing uh, the, the strongest border security bill in U.S. history, even though it was drafted in the United States Senate by one of its most conservative members, Oklahoma's James Langford, yesterday morning. We heard Speaker Mike Johnson saying that he didn't want to shut down the, fe the federal government. He, he wanted to work with, with everybody and get a funding bill passed. Donald Trump comes out later in the day telling uh, House members, Republican House members, uh, not to support the bill unless he have some, uh, you know, bizarre measures uh, jammed in there. What, uh, what, what's your thought on that? And do you think the government will end up uh, being funded? As House Democrats, we're going to work as hard as we can to make sure that we fund the government in a manner that meets uh, the needs of the American people in terms of their health, their safety, their national security, and their economic well-being. At the same time, extreme MAGA Republicans, led by Donald Trump, are determined to shut the government down unless uh, they jam Trump's Project 2025 down the throats of the American people. That's what this spending fight is all about. We reached a bipartisan agreement connected with the Fiscal Responsibility Act that was signed into law and had a support by the majority of Republicans last spring that set spending numbers for this fiscal year and for the next fiscal year. Right, right. Republicans but have Jeffrey, chosen to so break their agreement. It, it's, it's, not, it's not even about that. I mean, with, with, with Donald Trump, just like last night, where, again, he continued the lie that, that hospitals kill doctors kill babies who were born uh, after nine months. 
there's now the big lie that's being spread that uh, Republicans want to stop illegal immigrants from voting. Uh, and, and they have to pass a bill to stop illegal immigrants from voting. It's already illegal for illegal immigrants to vote. So what is the purpose of this entire exercise? Well, that's correct. Uh, Donald Trump uh, lies for a living, and they're lying about that. The Constitution does not permit non-citizens to vote uh, in federal elections. That's clear. Uh, but what the bill being put forward by the extreme MAGA Republicans also does is it shortchanges the Department of Defense and our military readiness by $6 billion. It cuts $12 billion from veterans' health care, and it also cuts funding to the administration of Social Security. And so what this is really about, in addition uh, to their xenophobic lies that they continue to peddle, is that they want to extract extreme cuts that will hurt veterans, hurt the military, hurt seniors, and hurt the American people. And that's always been their agenda. Mm. All right, House Minority Leader, Democratic Congressman, Hakeem Jeffries of New York, thank you so much for being thank with you, us. Thank you, sir. Thank and you.